It's take four for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who for the fourth time over the past two years has the mandate in his hand from President Reuven Rivlin to form a new government. But time is running out. That mandate will expire in just over three weeks. Netanyahu is desperate to succeed where he failed the three previous attempts to establish a right-wing ruling coalition. Netanyahu's best chance, perhaps the only realistic chance to succeed, is to bridge the gap between the right-wing, pro-settlement, conservative, religious Zionism faction with the anti-Zionist, Islamist Ra'am party, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood movement. It sounds far-fetched, but if anyone could get that done, it would be Netanyahu, and he's been working hard this month, <coughs> holding meetings, making phone calls, twisting arms to try and make it work. But alas, according to multiple Hebrew language reports today, Netanyahu has come to the conclusion it's a bridge too far. Netanyahu reportedly has become convinced that religious Zionism chairman Bezalel Smotrich will not bend and he will hold firm to his vow to never support a government that relies, even from the outside, on support of Arab-Israeli Ra'am lawmakers. With us now is Simcha Rothman and MK with the Religious Zionism Party. Sir, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I want to thank you for having me. I want to start with what I believe is an important question for me to ask you directly. And I hope I get a direct answer. I believe voters deserve a clear answer. Would you agree to sit in a coalition ever that depends on the support of Ra'am, even from the outside? Yeah, I think the answer is very clear. We said no. And the reasons are also very clear. The reasons are that uh, we don't have anything against uh, Arab parties, but of course an Arab party who does uh, object uh, to the existence of Israel as the homeland of the Jewish people. And also, um, and, uh, support, uh, we just saw last week, we saw uh, the, the uh, when, when, one, when, when a terrorist came out of jail, what kind of reception did he get by the former head of the uh, Islamic movement? Um, so we know, we know their views on terror, we know their views on the state of Israel, and uh, we can't have any coalition uh, being supported on uh, on those uh, votes. Well, I appreciate that clarity because I mean, uh, uh, Smotrich was also like you were just now clear that the answer is no. But Itamar Ben Gvir earlier this month wouldn't be as definitive as, as you are no, being now. Yeah, Itamar also, uh, the Itamar also was very clear, and he was asked about questions, um, oh, a very hypothetical questions, and then and then he started saying that um, that's hypothetical, and they. Uh, claim that, uh, that it, well, it wasn't clear. It's very clear. The answer was very clear by Betal Smotrich, by anyone from our party who interviews. And this is a very clear um, position we have even before the election. So then let me ask about the possibilities left. I mean, the mandate expires in just over three weeks. What about the chances of Gidan Sa'ar coming back into uh, the fold? I really hope, um, um, you know, I, I don't think it's a, uh, it shouldn't be presented as the second option. At first, I think it's the first option. It might even be the only option, but it's the first option. It's definitely preferred by us as the first option because when you, every way you look at it, an Israeli Knesset, we, you have more than 61 Knesset members who are, um, their ideology is right wing. They support our views almost, almost uh, um, exactly on uh, issues of Judea and Samaria, and issues of the justice system, and issues of the Negev and the Galil and the, the lack of uh, uh, governability there, and all the issues that are important to the public in Israel, economical issues. Um, and it's, it, it would be a shame if we have to go to a fifth election when we can form a stable uh, right-wing ideological government. Yeah, but Saar has promised to not serve under Netanyahu again. That's the whole reason for his uh, his party. That's the Rosan existence here. This is uh, his vow. I, I don't think it's the only, I don't think it's the only reason for Sar's party existence. I think that uh, um, there are many parties, as you know, that uh, that object the, the continuous uh, rule by Benjamin Netanyahu's party and, and by, himself, by the person. But uh, there are differences. And besides objecting to Netanyahu's uh, uh, being prime minister, 
Um, Star Party was also said very loud and clear that they also will not be part of a coalition with uh, the Islamic movement. They also said they won't go and have a left-wing government. They also said they won't go to fifth election. They made a lot of promises. I respect that. I, I think that you need to ve be very clear, definitely during elections time. But after the election, you see the outcome of the election and you see the number of, of votes you've got and you have to choose between those different promises. And this, uh, I believe, because I know the people in Gidon Saar's party, in Tikva Hadasha, I know that they the the good. They're, they want good for the state of Israel. They want, uh, they, we share almost 100% of the same ideology. And I believe at the end, we'll find a way to form a government together. Uh, do you think, sir, uh, Neftali Bennett here, is, is he trying to dance at both weddings, as the expression goes? Uh, do you trust him uh, when he's having these meetings with the prime minister? Do you also think he, at the same time, has the ear of Yair Lapid? Um, I think it was very, it was published. You know, it's not it's not a secret that he had negotiations with Yair Lapid, and we also will be able to see very soon how uh, how he will react on the forming of the of the committee uh, to, to uh, in the Knesset. What kind of votes? Which side will he choose, and which party will choose to support? Um, we, I hope, uh, I hope he will uh, get back to his senses, senses and join a right-wing coalition, and won't be an obstacle to forming one. But uh, I have to say, sadly, uh, during the elections, we are very uh, uh, clear that uh, that his uh, position during the elections, uh, with both the right and the left. Um, it's not. It was not an act. It was actually a real possibility of forming a government with the left. And the past uh, week shows that uh, our fears were true. Mm. Um, and that's uh, that's really an option by him. I don't really understand how can a party that uh, the name is Yamina right wing how can they uh, uh, discuss seriously the option to to form a government which which is left wing, but. Uh, um, you know, that's uh, that's for him and his voters to decide. What, I'm, what I am sure that any leader who wants to be part of the leadership in uh, the right wing and the, the, um, the right wing of the Israeli political atmosphere cannot uh, survive um, going with the left. He just, uh, in, just will say very loud and clear that he's not part of the right wing bloc. And that's uh, that's a shame.